Hi, I'm Dr. Mora. Today we're going to be fabricating a temporary for the number 30 crown prep done in the last video. We've just seen the most important step is to put a little bit of the putty on the occlusal surface before making your temporary putty. We want to see sharp defined occlusal anatomy as seen here. Trim your putty to the halfway point on the occlusal surface of each adjacent tooth. This will allow you to verify complete seating. Having additional length of your putty extending over many teeth does not provide additional stability. In fact, it makes it more likely there will be an interference. Take the additional time necessary to trim your putty to the gingival margin. This will lead to a nice temporary immediately upon fabrication and a minimal amount of excess flowing over the gingiva and the adjacent teeth. Carefully evaluate the internal surface of your putty to make sure there are no pieces of debris or anything that would otherwise interfere with seating. Here we see a small piece and remove it. After completion of your crown preparation, ensure that there is a good path of insertion for your temporary, no undercuts, and a clean prep with well-defined margins and no debris. Next, we will apply Vaseline as a separator to our preparation. This is too much Vaseline. Wipe off the excess and apply a thin layer to your crown preparation. The thinner the layer, the more intimate the fit of the temporary will be to your preparation. If you apply a thick layer of Vaseline, that can cause a bumpy internal surface and a poor fit and even an open margin. Apply separator to the adjacent teeth and to the gingiva. Next, we are ready to fill our putty. Here we use BisGMA Integrity material. And while dispensing, we do not lift the tip out as that can introduce bubbles. You don't have to fill your putty all the way, but it is a good idea to drag material all the way up to the edges circumferentially. We seat the filled putty intraorally and ensure that the seating is complete. As we remove this small amount of excess, we can visually confirm that the putty was seated perfectly. We can keep this small amount of excess and use it to determine how set our material is. When the material is firm but still flexible, we remove the putty by peeling the putty off. This ensures that the temporary stays on the tooth intact and we can remove it carefully with a hemostat and gauze. Evaluate the internal surface and the margin and make sure there are no significant voids. Next, we can clean the temporary of the oxygen inhibited layer using alcohol gauze. With that slippery layer removed, we can mark our contact areas with a pencil. This is very important to make sure we do not create an open contact. And we can also use the edge of the pencil to carefully mark our finish line. Notice that we do not use the tip of the pencil for this. We use the side of the pencil. With our finish line clearly marked, trimming becomes easy. This trimming is done with a small straight E-cutter at 40,000 RPM. Evaluate from multiple views to ensure that all excess is removed and a smooth contour. Be careful to not remove the interproximal contact that we marked with a pencil. Minor voids can be quickly repaired with a flowable composite resin. A bonding agent is not required for this purpose. I'm, when I'm just doing like really tiny adjustments. Do you see any others we did? Excess flash is removed with the E-cutter. We'll try the temporary on and evaluate the fit. Evaluate the entire margin circumferentially. Do your best to evaluate the interproximal areas visually as well. Gentle rocking with a hemostat and a cotton roll is always a good way to remove the temporary safely. A light finishing of the entire temporary surface is done using a medium grit polisher between a speed of 5 and 15,000 RPM. Lightly finish the occlusal surface as well, but do not grind aggressively because you will flatten out the occlusal anatomy. Next, the goat hair brush is employed at speeds of 5 to 15,000 RPM to begin refining the finish. We can already see an improved shine. 
Brushes are ideal for working on the occlusal surface as they can reach all of the grooves and anatomy. If you find that the brush is leaving dark marks on your temporary, the speed is too high. For our final polish, a buffing wheel with acroluster is used. The buffing wheel is applied to the acroluster block for only 1 to 2 seconds. A minimal amount is sufficient to produce a mirror finish. We inspect our temporary for any rough areas that need final refinement. And seat our temporary. Inspect the temporary circumferentially to ensure no new problems have developed. Thank you for watching and please let me know if you have any questions.